Bonjour, messieurs, dames, or rather, guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Since, believe it or not, Voltaire's Candide is a German, and nonetheless he's an optimist. Strange, isn't it? But there you go. Today's cast are... Condide, bastard nephew of the Baron of Thundertontronk. It sounds like a bit of speech from the great dictator, but that's how Voltaire called him in Westphalia. He's being educated together with a young Baron by the teacher, philosopher and incorrigible optimist Pangloss. And this optimism he also hands down to his students. Also in the castle, the young Baron's sister Kunigunde, young, pretty and open-minded. Later, we meet an elderly lady who becomes a close confidant of Kunigundes and suffers from a severe handicap which isn't seen here, she only got one butt cheek. Finally, we mention Kakambo, who becomes the servant and friend of Condides. Those are the most important of the many figures, although the novel isn't really all that long. It is all about philosophy and in a very ironic way. Voltaire was a philosopher himself and endlessly loops Leibniz's statement that our reality is the best of all possible worlds, only to prove the contrary again and again. While the philosopher teaches the boy's theory, we live in the best of all possible worlds, he uses a more hands-on approach when it comes to the chambermaid. Hello! When Kunigunde witnesses this one day, she's shocked but also inspired to kiss Candide, who doesn't mind this attention and is fully prepared to further inquire into this field of study when they are caught by her daddy. Are you mad? Piss off! And he chucks Candide out of the castle. Now, as the young man doesn't have any money, Candide is very glad when some soldiers invite him. Here's money! Wow, that's really nice of you. Thanks for subscribing. Bang, you're a soldier in Bulgarian service now. And before you can say Eldorado, he's subjected to the strict Bulgarian drill. That reminds a bit of Prussian drill of the time, but probably Volti couldn't write this. After all, Frederick of Prussia was a sponsor of his. Pooh, I get beaten all the time. I'm out. Desertion, run the gauntlet. And in this military punishment, he's nearly beaten to death by the entire regiment, but luckily pardoned, so he's able to participate in the Seven Years' War, a disgustingly cruel European massacre. Okay, this is abominable. I'm running away to the Netherlands, cause they've got to be nice there, cause after all we live in the best of all possible worlds. Can I have something to eat? Are you mad? Uh, would you perhaps give me something to eat? Yeah, okay, uh, but that doesn't count. That's a madman, a so-called Anabaptist, a religious fanatic who thinks the Christian commandment of charity has to be taken literally. <laughs> anyway, Candide does a double take on the street. Huh? Pangloss? What's happened to you? Oh, Candide, lovely to see you. Well, the chambermaid has given me syphilis. We were attacked by the Bulgarians. All are dead, including Kunigunde. No! Yeah, but uh, it had to happen this way. After all, we are living in the best of all possible worlds. Together with their benefactor, they travel to Lisbon get into a storm and suffer shipwreck. The Anabaptist is killed by a sailor he had just saved before, but Candide and Pangloss arrive in Lisbon. The great earthquake of 1755 has just taken place. This is terrible, there's not even food. And yet we live in the best of all possible worlds when a guy comes up to them and goes, so you don't believe in sin? Uh, Inquisition, you're arrested. In order to prevent further earthquakes, and because there's not much else in the line of entertainment, the Inquisition now burns some heretics. Pangloss is next. You're lucky, you're pardoned. Thank God, you're not burned, you're hanged. No! So he's hanged and Candide is whipped. Bang, bang, bang. When a strange old lady appears. Follow me, I'll help you. And she nurses him to health again in a couple of weeks. Who are you? And then takes him into a house that has survived the earthquake, where he meets Kunigunde. Kuni! Candy, I'm so happy. I thought you were dead, nearly. I was raped and then sold as a slave. Now I'm being owned by this repugnant Jew who shares me with the Grand Inquisitor, but I'm virtuous. Of course you are, when the door opens and her owner steps in. What's this? And probably because Candide has hung out with soldiers too much, he just stabs him. Check. No, I've got a corpse in my parlor. Then the other shareholder pops up the Grand Inquisitor and goes, what's up here? And is likewise killed. Check. And the confidant goes, okay, we have to leg it now. They flee towards Cardiff on horseback, which is not really fun if you've got only one butt cheek. They are being robbed on the way, but luckily they get enough money out of selling the horses in order to buy a passage to South America, where Candide, with his Bulgarian drill, is now to fight rebel Jesuits for the Spanish as a captain. Oh, nobody in the world is as miserable as I am. You're so right. I bet you I'm more miserable. What? And the old lady tells her story. My mother was an Italian princess. My father was the Pope. African pirates kidnapped me, killed my mother, raped and enslaved me and sold me to Turks who were besieged by Russians and in order not to starve to death they ate one buttock of all women present. So I was lucky they didn't eat more and in the end I became the servant of that Jew. Oh wow, you won that bet. When they arrive in Buenos Aires, the local governor expresses an interest in Kunigunde. 
<laughs> and she goes, what am I to do? I love Condit. But her counselor goes, yeah, but the governor is far more rich and powerful. You've got to flee. I've got to flee. Fortunately, he's with Kakambu now, who he got to know in Cardiff, but who stems from South America. And he goes, look, we'll ride to Paraguay. There's the rebel Jesuits who are the enemies of the Spanish. But they are hardly out in the jungle when, follow me, they've got to see the Jesuit commander. And when Condit is addressed by him, he is flabbergasted. Baron, that's impossible. Why are you with the Jesuits instead of being dead? I escaped the evil Bulgarians. Your sister's alive too. The governor keeps her, but I'll rescue her and marry her. Like what? Marry her. You're a bastard. That's not on. You're not our league. And they get into a kind of argument. And unfortunately, Condit kills the companion of his youth. So Candy and Kaka have to run again. And when they are in the jungle, they meet two naked women who are pursued by two monkeys who are biting into their asses. I have the slight suspicion that Voltaire had a kind of butt fetish. Condit gets his gun out and shoots the monkeys. Bang! Ouch! No! My God! What's this? I saved them, didn't I? Those were their lovers. What? Monkeys? Well, someone married Donald Trump, didn't they? They better take real monkeys. The two women, however, get revenged on them by betraying them to the indigenous tribe of Oreillons, not Oreos. You're arrested. No, we are not Jesuits. We just stole the clothes of one of them who we had killed. You can confirm that with the local Jesuit authorities. Okay. It is as you said. Sorry for the inconvenience and have a safe journey. Wow, they are really civilized, aren't they? And our two friends, by chance, reach the legendary country El Dorado, where everything is made out of gold. Incredible. This is the perfect utopian society. Even the king is only a kind of manager and the commonwealth is really for everybody. And the king even allows them to go back and gives them gold and jewels packed on a couple of red riding rams they use in El Dorado. Unfortunately, most of the rams do not survive the journey back and they've only got one of them left when they are close to Surinam and meet a terribly mutilated guy missing one hand and one foot. And Condit goes, so who are you? Oh, I'm just a slave on a sugarcane plantation. I didn't work fast enough and tried to run away. That was my punishment. Collateral damage of the sugar you eat in Europe. And Condit is deeply touched and goes, fuck, maybe we don't live in the best of all possible worlds after all. Kakambo, you rescue Kunigunde, we'll meet again in Venice. I sir. And he has hardly arrived in Surinam when he is cheated of his last remaining ram by a robbing merchant. Oh no, our, all I've left now is jewels worth a couple of million and I've got to travel all alone without my ram. No, I'll arrange a competition. Whoever is the most unhappy person in the country can accompany me back to Europe. This competition is won by Martin, a kind of philosopher who wins because he had to work for a Dutch publisher for a long time, which is obviously very miserable, and uh, was also dissed by his family. Together they travel to Bordeaux and on the way they meet the red ram swimming across their route. What? I'm so happy. So the merchant got what he deserved. Maybe this is the best of all possible worlds after all. No way. Martin is a categorical pessimist. Now let's go to Paris. I always wanted to see the Moulin Rouge. But in Paris, everybody just wants his money. But in return, we can magnificently discuss literature. And they also want to trick him with a false Kunigunde. Kunigunde? That's not Kunigunde, you frauds! Uh, arrested. They are foreigners, after all, so better arrest them, <laughs> don't we? Luckily, they are able to buy their way out and don't go to England now, although they had planned to, but finally go to Venice. Unfortunately, they do not find Kakambo and Kunigunde there, but meet the prostitute Paquette and the friar Giroflé. Now that's a happy couple, aren't they? Are you happy, you happy couple? Don't you recognize me, Candide? Incredible! You're the chambermaid who gave syphilis to Pangloss, aren't you? Tush, that's bad for business, right? I'm working in the escort service line here. But it's really shit. Really? And how are you, Friar? Oh, life's a piece of shit. And Martin goes, you see? How about the best of all possible worlds? And they meet a rich snob who really got everything. I got a palazzo, I got lots of money, beautiful art, beautiful girls, and it's all terribly boring. You see? But you like to talk down everything, don't you? That doesn't count. Well, I don't mind if I'm the only happy person in the world when I am reunited with Kunigunde soon. And they are dining in their inn together with seven deposed kings who by a funny chance all checked in there when they meet Kakambo. Kaka! Candy! Wow! Kuni and I got attacked and enslaved by pirates. I'm serving one of these ex-kings now. Kuni is washing dishes on the shores of the Sea of Marmara. Yes, fantastic. We'll buy you out of slavery. They take the next galley to Turkey and Candy does this double take again on the ship and goes, huh? Those two rowing slaves who are beaten? That's Pangloss and the young baron. Yeah, I somehow survived the hanging by the Inquisition. And I was healed from your stabbing. Fantastic. Now we free Kuni. And they find her washing dishes on the shores of the Sea of Marmara. And Candide goes, huh? Oh no, she's grown all ugly in the meantime. Well, I'll still marry her. What? 
Are you mad? There's still the social difference. Listen, buddy, I've killed you once already because of this and I just freed you. No! And although Candide isn't that keen on marrying Komi anymore, he does it now just to spite her brother. Then he rents a little farm on the seaside where now the whole gang settled down, including the old lady, the whore and the friar, and set up a kind of self-supporting kibbutz. And just once more, they try to find out about optimism and the best of all possible worlds and ask a Muslim wise man who goes, no idea, got to look after my farm. And Pangloss goes, but I still think we live in the best of all possible worlds. And I think we've got to work in the garden. So after having seen much evil and some goodness in the world, Condit now arrives at the conclusion that meaning and happiness in life depend on simple, regular work. I think I quickly need to go to the DIY store. And this dear congregation was Candide or Optimism by Voltaire.